Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Sorry. Hello and welcome everyone. I realize I just kicked off without being audible. I'm hoping that you can all hear me now. Uh, just looking for confirmation that you can hear me. Yes. All right. Welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to see so many of you online. Welcome to this introductory webinar about the Gold Standard Network platform that we're about to launch. Um, we are really encouraged by the interest, by the number of you that are uh, that, that have signed up and are still signing on. So I'll take it a bit slowly on the introduction because we're expecting up to 200 participants today. Um, I'd like to also thank uh, the message um, that the today's date is wrong. We are, of course, in 2018 and not 2017. Um, so that being said, let me get started with a small introduction. Um, and kick us off for this webinar. Now, my name is Sandra Gené. I'm the Director of Partnerships and Business Development, and I'll be your moderator for today. Um, I'm also joined by uh, Marion Burles, our uh, CEO, and Bernardo Lazo, also Director of Partnerships and Business Development. Um, and we're going to spend today introducing to you the Gold Standard Network platform. Uh, following an introduction from Marion on the why we are launching this platform, we'll describe more about the what, the, the benefits that it offers, and the partner programs we're launching this year, and then expand a bit more on how we will engage with participants in the platform, both online and offline. Um, now, we will have some time at the end for Q&A, but I encourage you to send any questions throughout the presentations by means of the chat. And if you're unfamiliar with GoToWebinar, then you'll find this in the control panel in the bottom right. You'll see a chat there and you can send your questions. But we'll have some time at the end to cover those. Um, so that being said, I'd like to hand over the floor to uh, Marion um, to uh, kick us off um, with the why uh, of the Gold Standard Network platform. Marion, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sandra, and, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have so many of you online with us today. Uh, as Sandra said, I think we had over 200 uh, registered participants, so that's, uh, uh, that, that's really amazing. Um, what I'd like to do now is really spend a few minutes to give you an overview of, of the why. So why are we doing this? How does it fit uh, with other initiatives that, that we uh, uh, are working on or, or launched previously? And then Sandra and Bernardo will um, uh, uh, take a, um, a deeper dive into the what and the how. So, so moving on uh, uh, to the next slide, Sandra. Um, as, as you all know, we, we launched Gold Standard for the Global Goals last year. Uh, so I won't go over that in details now. Uh, that, that's a separate conversation, but I, but I think it's important for everyone um, uh, to, to realize that the platform is part of the same process, uh, heading into the same direction. Uh, so, so as you know, our vision at, at Gold Standard is climate security and sustainable development for all. Uh, we've always been about climate and sustainable development. We're not uh, uh, looking at sustainable development now because it has become um, a hotter topic than it was 15 years ago. Uh, uh, we've always been about climate and SD. It's, it's in our DNA. Uh, our contribution to, to that vision, the difference we can make towards that vision is really uh, uh, to contribute to, to mainstreaming credible impact quantification and certification. So we believe we, we contributed to mainstream sustainable development considerations in the carbon market. When we started 15 years ago, SD was um, 
uh, uh, something no one really cared about and now it's become uh, as important as uh, other considerations such as environmental integrity for example uh, so we want to take that further and, and really mainstream credible impact quantification and certification um, we believe it's only going to be possible though if we can significantly bring down cost and maximize the value we deliver uh, so that has become our mantra internally, and you'll hear and you'll see uh, 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 more uh, explanations and more communications on that going forward. But everything we do is now uh, conceived and, and sought through the lens of how does it contribute to minimizing cost, time, and maximizing value. Obviously, um, when we talk about value, we, we consider value uh, from a user perspective, but also value to society. So we will not compromise on credibility and rigor. Uh, so, so moving on, um, as you know, um, goal standard for the global goals is modular and flexible. Uh, and so I realize uh, 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 when looking at this slide at a first glance, it can seem slightly more complex than what we had before. Uh, but actually, Gold Standard for the Global Goals as a platform enables us to find really the, the right balance between credibility and rigor on one hand and um, uh, uh, being user-centric on the other hand. And this is really what, what this uh, uh, slide is, is, is telling us and is showing is the, the, the balance of uh, credibility, rigor um, uh, and also uh, uh, flexibility and, um, and user-centric on the other hand. Um, goal standard for the global goals and, and, and the innovation there is also uh, uh, a departure, if you want, from an old tradition. And we were part of that tradition, but, but we now want to move away from it. A tradition of really creating a new standard each time a new problem or a new opportunity comes up. Uh, we believe it, it doesn't, um, uh, it's not scalable it doesn't allow for massive adoption of credible uh, uh, approaches. So uh, uh, goal standard for the global goals is designed such that it can be tailored to specific needs and to specific applications, thereby providing comparability and consistency across the board and, and uh, really uh, thereby providing um, a, a, a common platform that can be applied at project program uh, 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 landscape uh, or, or large-scale intervention and covering uh, a range of certified impacts. So you see, here you see a, a, a selection of the certified impacts uh, 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 that, that can be quantified and certified using gold standard for the global goals. Um, again, it, and, and those impacts, as, as, we, um, um, as uh, it was mentioned in the previous slides, can either be certified for reporting purposes or for monetization purposes. So we are not looking to monetize every single impact. Uh, uh, again, we want to leave it to the users to decide the ultimate objective of the certification. And, and moving on to, to the next slide, really the objective with those new solutions and those innovations is to maximize the value we deliver to existing and future users. So here you see um, a number of existing and, and, and new users and our objective is that every single change, every single innovation uh, adds value whilst uh, uh, contributing to reducing time and cost. And so a few examples of, of how we do that, of how we can um, uh, deliver more value. So for example, looking at environmental markets, uh, uh, we're, we're working to future-proof verified emission reductions or VER post-2020, making sure that gold standard certified VERs remain relevant in the post-2020 world and, um, and, uh, and are able to overcome devil counting issues, for example, or uh, tap into new opportunities like the aviation market. But we're also working to uh, create an alternative financing strategy for renewable energy projects. So we launched last year a gold standard renewable energy certificate label. We realized we need to do more work to bring that label to market and really um, uh, 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 secure uptake. But, but the solution is available and, um, and, and, will, uh, and will start bearing fruits this year. Other examples on how we can maximize value to uh, users of the standard, really leveraging the flexibility and the modular approach of gold standard for the global goals is really by uh, enabling the, the certification of impacts to unlock resource-based financing, for example, 
or um, enabling the or, or I mean enabling the certification of impacts to unlock uh, corporate claims, and that's where uh, our corporate uh, supply chain program uh, is coming from. But you'll hear more about that and and about. Um, uh, those other programs that I talked about later in the presentation. So, so why am I saying all that and how is this relevant to the platform and to our conversation today? Well, um, we realize that we can only achieve those objectives and, and, and enable them the, the mainstreaming of credible impact quantification and certification solutions through um, a collaborative approach. Um, collaboration is crucial for a number of reasons. I think one, one important reason to us right now is that collaboration can, a, can enable us, sorry, to be uh, uh, much more user-centric. It's by working more closely with our users that we can uh, learn how to um, uh, meet your needs better. Uh, but also collaboration can help us to better link the, the supply side and the demand side. I'm not talking about um, uh, uh, making deals happen here, but I'm really talking about understanding the needs and the expectations of the supply side and the needs and the expectation of the demand side and making sure that the innovations and, and the changes, the solutions we design are actually fit for purpose. Uh, uh, collaboration can also help us to be closer to the market trends and better anticipate future trends uh, uh, to future proof um, our work. Uh, so, so a collaborative approach is necessary, <clears throat> but really the reality we face is this one, and, and, and you all know us and have known us for, for, for a long time, so this is not going to be new to you. Uh, um, we are a small player, we're about 20, 25 people, and, and what's, uh, uh, can be, um, what's interesting is that we, um, uh, whenever we, we work with partners, we tend to be usually the, the smaller one. Uh, we're the smaller partner um, uh, in the consortium, and, and, and that means we have limited resources to engage. Uh, we, we simply cannot have bilateral conversations with every single partner for every single opportunity. It's not, it's not doable. Uh, uh, on the other hand, however, and that's the positive side of the equation, the positive side of the reality we face, is that we, we can be um, a, a powerful convener. Um, and, uh, and so the question we asked ourselves when we looked at that and said, okay, we need to, to, to be more collaborative, but how can we design a, a collaboration approach that would be truly scalable? Uh, how can we design a collaboration approach that would be scalable and also um, adapted, fit for, for our needs and the needs of our, of our stakeholders? And that's really where the platform is coming from. Uh, it's a structured and efficient way of interacting with, with all of you, with all our part partners. And, and to me, what, what's really important, because it's um, uh, something that I've heard from some of you uh, uh, in the past, the, 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 the need to provide um, and to ensure equal access to opportunities to everyone. And so the platform is our response um, uh, uh, to that need. It will make it possible for us with our limited resources to ensure everyone on the platform has access to the same information and to the same opportunities. And uh, 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 this is, we believe, a, a, a centralized tool uh, uh, that will be a really efficient way uh, a scalable way to, to deliver uh, um, information and, and give you equal access to opportunities. And, um, and really closing the, the, this introduction before I hand over to, to Sandra and Bernardo, closing with, with what I started with, um, you, you can consider the platform as one example of, of how um, uh, we can deliver more value to you, to, to all our users in a cost and, and time effective way. And Sandra, happy for you to um, take it over from here. All right, thanks, Marion, and thank you for that introduction. So without further ado, I'm next and officially introducing to you the Gold Standard Network platform. And so as mentioned, uh, as Marion mentioned, um, the platform is going to allow us to structure and mobilize partnerships. And we're going to do this by means of structured partner programs that are focused towards concrete outcomes and outcomes are intended to catalyze more ambitious action for climate security and sustainable development. Now, to support this effort, 
The platform brings together our stakeholders. It facilitates closer engagement between Gold Standard uh, and our network. And with that creates a means for open innovation. And it does this by delivering programs, initiatives, and materials that uh, support the development, uh, but also the deployment and scaling of project impact. And the opportunities that closer engagement and collaboration can offer you include uh, delivering on best pr uh, practice climate action uh, and a means to demonstrate leadership. It allows you to stay up to date on policy trends and developments on the carbon markets. Um, and, and this is a, a two-way uh, uh, engagement, so uh, we will inform, but we're also looking to our network to inform us. Um, with that, you can gain insights on supply and demand trends of uh, climate and uh, sustainable development projects. Uh, the platform is also a place where you can participate in developing case studies or uh, piloting new solutions or be an early adopter of new certification pathways. And we're using the platform really to identify opportunities with our network to collaborate uh, with us and other industry peers and, and really develop new methodologies and tools. And with that, uh, or to, to enable that, uh, there is plenty of networking opportunities and means to showcase your own efforts as well. Now, opportunities for collaborations are, are offered at different levels. So at the foundational level sits the platform <coughs> where you can join, um, uh, that is open for anyone to join, and it gives access to concrete benefits um, in, in, uh, in return for annual contributions. Now, engagement there centers on providing input, sharing ideas, best practices, um, but also means to feed into strategies in support of quantification and certification of impacts. Now we'll host on the platform exclusive content, offer early insights and feedback opportunities. Uh, this is also the place where we'll have open calls for new partner programs <coughs> and a means to connect and interact with each other. Now at a higher level, sit the partner programs. And if you join as a partner to these programs, you join us and other experts and influencers to co-create test and scale solutions that can range from either open source methodologies, new tools, new strategies, development of labels, et cetera. And to structure those programs, they're generally composed of two phases. Now, in a first phase, we uh, invite strategic partners into a consortium to co-create new solutions with us. And in a second phase, um, working groups are run that test the applicability of the developed solutions. Uh, as mentioned, open calls for new partnership opportunities will be shared on the platform to all platform participants. Now, some programs will have specific criteria to join uh, and also have a funding requirement. So, for example, to join a working group as an implementation partner um, uh, is possible at a 10,000 euro fee. Uh, but we're also running some programs that uh, uh, platform participants can join for free. Now, coming back to the platform level, uh, here we've set contribution fees to sliding scale. Uh, the intention is this for this platform to be as inclusive as possible. So the fee should not provide a threshold for joining. And for that reason, we've set them by revenue category and to a level uh, that is uh, um, necessary to be able for us to facilitate and the development uh, uh, of content, but also sessions and also uh, and, and the engagement that the platform offers. Um, these contributions also support us as a nonprofit. Um, so we will also give you access to a logo if you join, so you can use this in your own communications to showcase your support to Gold Standard. Um, I should highlight with this slide that allied members, so with that we mean uh, associations or, or governmental uh, institutions, but also uh, uh, NGOs that have committed to be part of our NGO supporter network, they get free access to the platform. So if you're on the call and you're not sure whether your organization has co confirmed their support or alliance, uh, you can get uh, in touch with us at platform at goldstandard.org. And we can let you know or we can get you connected. 
<clears throat> now, in return for these contributions, we offer concrete benefits, and we've grouped them under four key areas, uh, including additional tools and insights to what Gold Standard already offers in the public space, but also some exclusive networking and profiling opportunities. So examples of benefits include quarterly market updates, impact calculation models and visuals, and an online forum to share experience and profile your own climate and sustainable development related efforts, as well as insights. Now we'll be rolling out these benefits throughout the year. Um, the online platform has not yet gone live. Uh, um, the intention was for it to already be live, but by now we are aiming for our conference at the beginning of April to, to, to really bring it online. And the benefits mentioned here will be rolled out through and available to you throughout the year. Now, coming to the um, partnership level, I'm reflecting a little bit more on the um, way we structure programs <coughs> and the two phases in which we do that. Looking at uh, strategic partners, as mentioned, it's really to bringing together partners that can identify market needs, but also engaging key influencers that um, uh, are, are necessary to be involved in order to get, create the right level of endorsement uh, and, and uptake uh, of solutions that are developed. If you join at this level, it also allows you to demonstrate uh, leadership and gives you an influential role in, in shaping and uh, uh, also in disseminating program outcomes. Now the second phase, um, uh, and this we facilitate by means of uh, a working group with structured sessions um, to test the applicability of the solution that's been developed in the first phase. Um, and with that also uh, create a feedback channel um, uh, towards further adjustments um, of the solution and for further context specific applications, but also case studies, publications, and, and, and a ways uh, and a means to communicate it, uh, about it together as a group of partners. Um, the, these sessions can also provide you with further insight on the solution that has been developed and a feasible pathway to certification if this is applicable. And ultimately by engaging key users in the development of a solution, um, we uh, think further dissemination and uptake can be encouraged. So um, referring back to the four strategic areas that uh, Marion mentioned, where we are looking to develop new solutions for the users of a standard, um, this table here shows which programs we are launching this year on the platform and they're highlighted in bold. Uh, but it also shows all the other topics that we are working on and looking to engage with our network on. Uh, so some of those refer to newly launched certification pathways and outcomes, uh, such as the renewable energy label, but also a recently launched gender framework. And with the platform, we will also offer additional materials, uh, discussions and support capacity building to those who wish to be closely engaged with us and help us and support us in bringing these innovations to market. Uh, looking specifically at the programs that are geared at new innovations, uh, the rest of this presentation, we're gonna present to you the four programs we are looking to launch this year. So kicking off is, first up is the uh, value chain emissions uh, accounting uh, program. So this program has actually already kicked off. We've brought together a consortium of strategic partners <clears throat> that are looking to connect project level accounting with corporate level accounting. And with that, working towards the development of a framework. And the framework will give guidance on how to account and report interventions in the supply chain. So this will enable corporates to make best use of existing in instruments. So uh, referring to insetting, offsetting, uh, or emission factors and also ensure that they gain recognition for their climate mitigation efforts. And this is towards their uh, corporate inventory performance goals and also includes uh, science-based targets. Um, we are uh, looking to launch this framework by uh, June this year. And with that, the first phase is uh, concluded and the framework will be publicly accessible. 
but from there we are looking to launch a, uh, a working group for implementation partners entering a second phase and this working group will test the applicability of the framework in corporate context uh, also allowing for feedback for possible adjustments uh, and it gives participants access to capacity building and support in the, in the application of the framework and with this group we want to co-develop context specific applications or best practice case studies that can really uh, uh, showcase how the framework can be applied. So who can join? Uh, we're looking for this group for corporates that have significant scope three emissions or targets. And uh, we're launching the first working group and focusing this on fast mover consumer goods uh, companies uh, and specifically those that have significant agri uh, uh, agricultural value chains. <coughs> now, already highlighting what, who are the strategic partners that are working with us on the development of the framework. Um, this slide shows who we're working with, and this includes design-based targets partners, uh, so WWF, um, WRI, CDP. Um, and with that also uh, is working towards an, an endorsement by uh, the science-based targets partners, uh, and ultimately linking to the GHG protocol, scope three protocol as well. Um, so as the slide shows, we are now uh, opening uh, a call for additional implementation partners to express their interest. Now coming to the second program, this is a program that's still in its first strategic phase. So we're exploring uh, whether and how uh, we can launch this program and if there's partner interest to join us in this. Um, so last year we launched a draft version of corporate climate leadership guidelines uh, co-authored with WWF and CDP and the feedback that we've gotten from the market since then is that there would be a uh, interest in turning these guidelines into a benchmark. Um, the benchmark can be used by corporates as a self-assessment tool and support in uh, uh, guiding them through the main climate initiatives and steps that companies should be taking uh, uh, in order to have uh, leading climate strategies. Um, so in this first phase, we are opening up a call for strategic partners to indicate interest if they want to support us in turning this into a benchmark. Um, should we succeed? Uh, with that, then we'll run from there a second phase uh, of working groups that will uh, test the application uh, of the benchmark and uh, share best practice um, case studies. Um, so there's an open call now and a decision moment in September whether we will kick off uh, with this program. And with that, so these are the strategic partners who've supported us in the co-development of the guidelines. But with that, I'd like to hand over the floor to Bernardo, who's going to um, uh, explain more about the uh, remaining two programs we're launching this year. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, two programs that relate uh, or that are relevant for uh, project developers, NGOs, and most likely also uh, carbon retailers. Uh, those that are shaping and, and identifying the potential <coughs> risks and also options for uh, future-proofing the voluntary carbon market post-2020. Uh, and this program is open to um, uh, participation uh, for uh, both uh, retailers or project developers that have a number of, uh, of projects that could uh, want to put uh, forward uh, to assess. And the phase one of this program is uh, development of a double counting uh, risk assessment grid and analysis of the voluntary current market exposure to double counting risk post uh, 2020. And by this, we uh, <clears throat> we will be looking at alignment and endorsement sought by key uh, market players, including industry-wide <clears throat> workshop at the Gold Standard Conference. And during the phase two working group, uh, we will taste uh, the application of the grid and develop consensus-based solutions to overcome this uh, 
uh, these risks. Um, this open call for implementation partners will be free for platform participants. And we will <coughs> aim to kick off this uh, program in May and, and have public session at the conference. We the aim to uh, work uh, on the following six months and present some results uh, by uh, year end or towards the uh, COP. Uh, this, uh, <coughs> this double uh, counting program will be obviously quite uh, uh, relevant applying to the different uh, market players. Uh, so we would encourage those interested to contact us. Uh, we will have some uh, requirements to manage the number of, of uh, participants to make it manageable, uh, but we are already working on this uh, double counting uh, risk assessment degree. Uh, can we go to the next uh, slide, please? So this program, we have uh, strategic partners, uh, My Climate, and it's also supported by uh, the Federal Ministry of Environment uh, from Germany. And we are uh, at the moment uh, recruiting for implementing partners uh, for phase two, both, as I mentioned, uh, carbon retailers and project developers that would like to assess the risk uh, for double counting on their programs and together to uh, identify options to um, uh, mitigate or reduce those uh, risks towards uh, 2020. The second program uh, that, I'm, that we are uh, considering for uh, developing with project developers and NGOs, uh, it's around SDG1, which is the eradication of uh, reduction and eradication of poverty. So SDG1, and here uh, <clears throat> the program aims to develop a claim for SDG1 for projects that significantly contribute to poverty alleviation. Uh, the plan is to have an SDG1 flag that will help developers in designing and implementing projects for targeted beneficiaries, such as poor, low-income households and underserved communities. In the phase one, uh, uh, we will work on exploring and co-developing what would be this SDG one criteria for, uh, to be applicable for projects. Uh, whereas on the second phase, the is, would be the application and testing of these criteria, and including dissemination and shared communication efforts. And this uh, program would also be free for platform participants. And we encourage NGOs and project developers to, to join in this uh, phase one. Uh, the kickoff is uh, aimed to be developed, to be, to be starting in September, uh, but we will have a public session for discussion at the conference uh, to discuss uh, the, uh, the relevant applicability and the potential benefits that this labeling uh, or claims would, uh, would make to, to these projects targeting uh, poor on uh, low-income house households. And here I, I would like to share with you uh, that we are about to launch the online uh, platform. Um, and this would be uh, um, the section where you can look at the initiatives, um, that are being developed and that uh, we have just uh, presented uh, to also have a forum for uh, interaction with, uh, <clears throat> with each other and to be able to uh, identify who are the other participants and engage with them and as well as uh, reading the latest uh, news and developments around programs and initiatives being developed during the, during the platform. As uh, Sandra mentioned, uh, the platform would be uh, composed of the online uh, platform, the component, uh, as well as uh, offline uh, meetings and events, uh, one of them being at the Grow to Zero conference. And we will also schedule uh, quarterly webinars uh, to provide the first to know you know information and discussions and updates 
on the different uh, activities and uh, initiatives uh, being done through the platform to keep uh, the different uh, participants engaged, both uh, corporates, uh, carbon retailers, consultants, uh, and project developers, as well as NGOs and other <clears throat> governments and associations that will be part of this platform. Here is a sneak preview of how the platform uh, will look and the different uh, functionalities that it will have. I won't go into detail on them, but <clears throat> you will be able to see the different uh, participants that will be in the network. Uh, each one will have a profile, organizational profile, uh, where they can have the company information, the programs that they are involved and at which level are they involved, as well as their, <clears throat> their most uh, recent activity. Uh, there will be also an online forum where uh, you could see the latest uh, discussions and engage in, in discussions as well as making announcements of uh, recent uh, activities coming from your uh, organization that will be relevant to other participants that you would like to share, uh, market information, uh, as well as accessing uh, an archive of uh, documentation, not only the one that it's available <coughs> online on their website, but also exclusive content that will be produced uh, uh, only for the platform. Uh, you will be able to see which are the active programs as well as uh, the announcements for upcoming uh, events, upcoming programs, as well as for call for new uh, initiatives to, uh, to, to be invited to take part. And uh, here is just a reminder that uh, during the uh, conference coming up in Berlin, um, April 18th and 19th, we will run a series of sessions that uh, some of them will be uh, relevant and quite useful for project developers and NGOs, and some others are uh, tailored towards uh, corporates. So, for instance, for project developers and NGOs, we have a session on future-proofing the voluntary carbon market for Paris Agreement and Corsia, which is related to the program I presented initially. Um, there is also a session on capacity building for uh, the uh, gold standard for the Global Goals project, as well as another session for NGO supporters to have a strategy session and see how we can uh, as gold standard further uh, provide uh, engagement, support, and use the the platform to um, to bring more um, value and collaboration uh, for participating in, in this or other potential new program, as well as discussing the uh, scaling uh, poverty alleviation and, and development, uh, which refers to the second program that I uh, presented earlier. Uh, for corporates, we will have a session on uh, business leadership and climate and SDGs. Uh, as well as a session on how companies can use markets to reduce emissions and contribute to sustainable development, you know, finance beyond, reduce within and finance beyond. Um, and finally, uh, we will be co-hosting with a CDP a supply chain engagement uh, session on the 19th. Um, as well, for pl uh, platform participants, there will be an ex exclusive uh, breakfast networking um, on the 19th of April in the morning. Um, so for those, those of you that are, haven't uh, not yet signed up, uh, please do. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to, uh, to see you there. Um, also, final reminder: uh, if your if your organization is interested in uh, in sponsorship in sponsorship opportunities uh, at the conference, there are still uh, packages available. Here is a, a snapshot of the different uh, packages. Some of them include uh, access, free access to, uh, with entry passes, and others offer uh, free access or a, a, a big discount on the gold standard platform fees, uh, as well as obviously uh, uh, several opportunities to uh, to feature uh, your your company and your uh, participation. 
if you have uh, yeah if you would like to um, if you are interested in these sponsorship opportunities please contact uh, me or Sandra And finally, uh, here we're uh, sharing some of the early joiners of the platform. Uh, some of them have joined already since uh, January, and we we would like to thank uh, your your support and your patience, uh, as we have not yet launched the online uh, platform. Uh, but uh, we are obviously uh, happy to engage and to uh, listen to your comments and your ideas on how would you, would you like to participate. Uh, in the programs presented, or even to identify ideas for uh, for new initiatives to to take part. Uh, as you see, we have uh, participants that are, come from uh, the corporate sector, uh, corporate sector um, NGOs, as well as uh, carbon retailers and project developers. So it's a it's a it's a good mix of of participants that will balance both uh, supply and demand uh, from for certification and uh, climate outcomes, and uh, we, yeah, we look forward to um, to engage with uh, with uh, all of you uh, in the coming months. All right. Thank and you. here, yeah, I will just uh, hand over to Sandra for closing remarks and the Q and A session. All right, thank you, uh, Bernardo. So uh, in conclusion, um, with this, we've uh, uh, presented uh, uh, the structure and the benefits of joining the platform. It's multi-stakeholder, uh, so we're on inviting all of our network to consider joining. Um, the uh, online uh, platform will go live beginning of April prior, uh, or at our conference. Uh, but in the meantime, there's already offline benefits available. If you uh, are looking to sign up or have already signed up, uh, a key one is a 20% discount uh, on our conference tickets, um, uh, as well as some of the sponsorship opportunities. This is a, a good moment to, to, to join uh, because we're trying to, to, to offer you benefits for supporting us on both efforts. And with programs kicking off in May already, uh, we're happy to answer any questions that you may have uh, for further details or if you want to find out more about how to join. You can join on our website at www.goldstandard.org, uh, get involved, join platform. Uh, any questions that you want to ask us, you can uh, refer to uh, platform at goldstandard.org. And then, <coughs> of course, Bernardo and myself are available as well to connect with directly. Um, uh, as mentioned, this platform is multi-stakeholder, and, and so are we. Um, so Bernardo uh, in, um, manages relationships with uh, NGOs, governmental organizations, and project developers, whereas I'm focused on uh, um, consultancies, carbon credit retailers, and, and, and corporates. Um, so feel free to get in touch. Um, and then I'm uh, going to open up the floor to you now. If uh, there are any questions, uh, I see only one. Oh, I see also perhaps that, um, ah, there we go. I've seen that some people have sent questions in the question box and some in the chat box. So let me just grab those. Uh, in the meantime, starting with the first question is if there is a deadline to join, uh, no, there's not. It's uh, an annual contribution fee, um, so your your membership goes into effect from the moment that you paid your invoice, and is then valid for another 365 days after that, and you can re renew in the year following. Um, looking at a next question here, as a seller, except selling on the gold standard marketplace, what else can be a safe and open marketplace to make sure the price is reasonable? Um, I want to uh, revert this question to Bernardo. Um, as, as Bernardo, I know you've been in touch with a number of our project developers and um, looking to support them with this, as well as our uh, marketplace uh, on, on reaching the markets. So. 
Thank you, Sandra. Um, in terms of our marketplace, as, as you know, it, it has been operating uh, just for a few months. Uh, it has been uh, a good uh, tool to f uh, showcase projects for project developers. Uh, as you know, the, the volumes that are sold through the platform are small and are targeted particularly to uh, individual users or perhaps uh, very small organizations. Uh, but there has been good uh, uptake and, and interest, uh, both from the project side and also uh, buyers. So we will continue to develop uh, the, the marketplace to make sure that it uh, suits the needs of, of both uh, sides. Uh, however, we are not a, a, a market maker and, uh, and as such, we, we just want to, to remain sort of neutral in our position as a standard and certification body. Um, uh, but obviously, uh, trying to through either through the platform or uh, other mediums to bring closer uh, information about the market and uh, and bring closer the supply and demand. I wouldn't uh, necessarily point out to a specific uh, alternative platform to sell credits. I think uh, there are a numerous. Uh, uh, players that are working uh, with the corporates and with the, the buy side uh, to uh, to identify the, the project so i would say you can get in touch uh, with, with with those uh, carbon retailers and there there are quite a few already signed up in the platform and we expect uh, more to join so it could be uh, another reason to uh, <clears throat> to become part of the uh, of the platform uh, having said that the marketplace remains open to every project developer they don't need to join the uh, the the gold standard platform they can uh, just do directly uh, um, through the process we have in place to to join the marketplace and that will continue to <coughs> to remain um, an open an open service to all our stakeholders all right <clears throat> thanks bernardo while you're at it uh, a next question for you is whether the platform costs are replacing some of the development costs for new methodologies, um, uh, or is it a, a additional? Um, and I'll let you talk specifically on some of the uh, standards methodologies, um, but just to underline that um, the platform costs allow us to um, uh, facilitate engagement um, and connecting our network into these developments. Um, and then there are specific funding requirements for specific um, uh, solutions that we either raise by means of the partnership fees that I mentioned earlier or um, um, uh, under um, sort of price on demand uh, specific uh, uh, partnership agreements. Um, so and with that, the platform fees cover the the, the costs of uh, are, are set really on a cost recovery basis. But program costs will indeed uh, cover development costs for new solutions specifically. Um, Bernardo, do you want, maybe want to add uh, um, an additional reflection on the standards methodologies? Yes, um, one thing is. Uh, it is not a, a, a requirement to join the platform to develop a new methodology. It's just that through the platform, uh, you would be able to identify other potential either users of the methodology or people that are uh, thinking of developing something similar and then and therefore developing uh, collaboratively, as well as uh, perhaps testing the appetite of the market from the buyer side if, uh, if, uh, if that if that development is of interest uh, on those in the platform. So I think that's the value that can be added by doing it through the platform is not a, is not a requirement. Uh, but as, as you mentioned earlier, it's uh, the fees that we're charging are uh, recovery uh, cost fees for running the platform and the facilitation of, of these uh, interactions and development of, of, uh, of new methodologies will be uh, in addition, or covered through the program costs. No, if if this is a particular program to be to be developed, uh, that would be taken into account, obviously. All right, and then just quickly coming back on uh, platform fees. Um, um, I have a question here 
uh, whether the revenue threshold is uh, per year or total revenue, it's per year. Um, uh, so with that, uh, yeah, yeah, per, yeah, per total revenue of an organization. So they're set per year. And with that meant to be as accessible as possible. Uh, and then I should also mention on the uh, program uh, development costs. So the, uh, and these are much higher level funding requirements that we then ask. Um, that we always do this in collaboration um, with co-funders uh, and whether that's public funding or private funding um, that we're, by forming a consortium of partners uh, we try to cover the costs of development of new solutions new methodologies etc and then bring it to the platform participants to engage with closely Yeah, and just briefly adding to that, we will be seeking uh, to uh, identify uh, grants for co-funding some of these programs you know, from foundations and development organizations. All right, with that, I'm not seeing any further questions, except maybe there's one coming in now. Ah, there we go. Um, this one for you, Bernardo, is how can we utilize the platform as project developers for uh, solar PV plants, for operational plants and under development plants, uh, mainly focused on, on carbon trading? So I think just one clarification uh, about the platform. Uh, we are not uh, planning or it's not within the, the scope of, of this platform to be a, a trading uh, platform. Uh, we want uh, support that functionality and, and there there will be other there exist other other platforms uh, that are available to do uh, specific uh, trades either through bro uh, brokerage sites uh, so it's not the, the our role to to do that within this uh, this platform if they want to join uh, in this platform just to engage with other uh, participants and identify potential funders or potential buyers Within the platform, that's obviously something they can they can certainly uh, certainly do, you no, know? and even to engage with other project developers that might have faced similar uh, issues or uh, similar um, uh, challenges. Uh, we expect that uh, the platform can be a place to to exchange uh, lessons learned and best practices, uh, both for uh, the certification, but also in, in general for a project uh, development. There is a wealth of experience uh, accumulated with uh, many project developers uh, that uh, they might be able to to share some of these, uh, and, and also NGOs that are project developers that may be able to share this uh, this knowledge and this uh, yeah lessons learned uh, through the platform you now using the online forum functionalities and perhaps. Uh, if uh, if uh, sufficient uh, interest uh, is identified to create a specific program to uh, to generate uh, collaboration with uh, project developers uh, thanks thanks bernardo extending <clears throat> your uh, answer towards the next question very specific one on someone who's organizing events and wants to green their events <clears throat> asking what is the process and what's the cost uh, so linking back to Bernardo's answer, uh, this is not something that we facilitate, uh, but joining the platform will al allow you to identify uh, consultancies on the carbon credit retailers that do uh, uh, provide these services. Um, so the question you're asking here in this webinar now is something that, that you can post to the platform and uh, connected consultancies could uh, answer you or connect with you and, and support you in your efforts. And just to reiterate that the platform really is geared at collective and collaborative action, uh, at innovation of new solutions, uh, and sharing insights uh, uh, about those innovations and those topics, but also hearing from you, uh, our network, uh, what are the topics you're working on, uh, what is best practice, uh, and what are the new insights from the market that uh, Gold Standard and the, the, the wider network should be aware of. Um, finally, a very practical question, if it, is it possible for an individual to join? Um, <coughs> no, uh, you're joining as an organization, but you, you are represented. So on the online platform, we're making sure that it's possible for you uh, to, to present yourself as an individual as well. 
Um, so um, uh, effectively, you can join, um, but the still uh, the still the same organization fees uh, uh, apply whether you're uh, an individual or not. Um, and with that, I think there's no more questions. Oh wait, just one coming in um, on whether we're interested to team up with collaborators in biodiversity and to co-create a holistic package. Uh, I, I think this is too too, too broad a, a, a question to go into detail, but um, uh, yes, we are. Uh, and it's exactly questions like this that we want to facilitate through the online platform for you to really bring to us uh, opportunities to collaborate where you think Gold Standard has a role. Uh, and specifically, where as a, a standard setter and a neutral facilitator, we can bring uh, the right, um, um, the key actors, influencers, uh, uh, and users of solutions to the table to work together with us in a uh, in a consortium. Um, um, so, uh, back to the short answer of uh, yes. Um, uh, please get in touch with us for now by means of the emails here on this last slide. Um, and um, if you're interested to join the platform and have further conversations like this online. Uh, then please go to our website. Any further information on how to sign up or uh, benefits you can get, uh, feel free to contact us as well. I'm not seeing any further questions. Um, leaving just a little bit of time for the very last one or two. All right, with that, I'm not seeing anything else come in. So with that, uh, I'm going to uh, wrap up the session. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us, uh, for showing interest, and we hope to welcome you uh, to the platform soon. Um, and then a final um, note that we will share both the slides and the recording um, uh, with all of you attending, but also all of you who've uh, registered for this platform, uh, for this webinar. All right, so on that, uh, thank you and goodbye. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.